in the infrared light telescope, you know, infrared spectrums, then they stand out like a sore thumb. Yeah. But you got to spot them first. Uh, is this uh, is this second sun? Is it written in any prophecy? Well, there's there are two sun prophecies that are written, but I will tell you the most interesting thing for me. Uh, and, and, you know, and ask your listeners out there in the chat rooms, how many of folks out there listening to the show ever had a dream about Y2K? Did you? You ever hear of anybody had a dream about Y2K? Uh, no, really didn't. And yet we were all buckled up and ready for a bad uh, one, weren't we? Yeah. And there were a ton okay. of people writing books, books about it. That's right. Well, I'm, uh, let me tell you this. And, I, you know, it's funny. One question no one's asked me is what keeps me interested in this? Why do I keep writing about it? All right. Especially when I have people calling me reptilian and all kinds of nasty names. All right. And I'll tell you what keeps me writing about it is that I've become less of a scientist and more of a sociologist. This is, to take the phrase from Encounters of the Third Time, it is an évolant sociologique, a sociological event. I have people from all around the world. They don't know each other. They're on every continent, mm -hmm. and they're writing me, and they are talking about their dreams, visions, mm -hmm. premonitions, remote viewing, mm -hmm. out-of-body experiences, yeah. every form of paranormal experience you could imagine. And they all see the same things. They all see mm -hmm. tsunamis, eruptions, mm -hmm. two suns in the sky. Really? It is a recurring theme. It comes up again mm -hmm. and again mm -hmm. and again and again. And it is something that's part of the newly aware and something that was really fabulous phenomena that I observed when we brought out our book, Planet X Forecast and 2012 Survival Guide. I not only had these people coming forward to tell me, but I had a whole new group of people that we hadn't even been talking to before step forward, and now they felt that they had someone to talk to. Mm -hmm. And they were coming to us and saying, look, my grandparents and my parents, my aunts, my uncles, they were telling me about Planet X mm -hmm. and telling me to prepare for these times. Yeah. Yeah. It's multi-generational. Uh let me let me uh, make this comment here. This is from a uh, a listener who says that uh, the Book of Revelation seems to suggest that there's going to be a sort of a fire uh, destruction coming more than a liquid destruction. Anything in, uh, you're you're saying it's going to be fire? Are there going to be fires after the giant tsunamis and such, or is, is there a conflict here? Well, I think that it's if it comes in and it has a position where it would be another Noah's flood, mm -hmm. that there would be a different level of preparations going on. Mm -hmm. I tend to feel it's not going to be as extreme as a Noah's flood. What we yeah. will see, uh, what we're seeing, are the principal killers, all right, from space are going to be uh, solar flares, CMEs. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next thing we're going to see are a lot of meteorite showers. Now, this will be very much akin to what happened during the uh, Ten Plagues of Exodus. Now, the Ten Plagues of Exodus is written as an allegory. And it is also extremely well documented in the Colburn Bible, which we published in the Egyptian accounts. Uh, they say that those Ten Plagues were caused by this object passing through the system. And that this really all started, was triggered primarily by the meteorite showers. And the meteorite showers then come down with iron and shreversite. Iron is what gives uh, the blood red color to the waters. The shreversite is what causes the algae blooms. The algae blooms kill the fish, create a whole host of problems. Uh, you know, what they document was that most certainly within the realm of their regional concept. Uh, this, this was a massive, this was not about Pharaoh and uh, Moses. Uh -huh. uh, this was a massive regional disaster. They document the fact that the better part of the Jews were slaughtered mm -hmm. during the crossing of the Red Sea, All right. that the Pharaoh died at that time, that was leading it, it was at the front, that after that, Egypt was then invaded from the south okay. by hungry hordes, probably out of the Sudan. Hungry hordes. And uh, because they had the gold, 
and they had the grain, and they had just taken a huge military defeat. Mm -hmm. And so their their story of it is is more akin to it's it's not written as a religious text. It's more like our nine eleven report. Yeah. All right. Because they got their tuchus whipped, and uh, worse for them was that their whole pantheon of gods had failed them. You know, the, mm-hmm. here they had the, the the God of the Hebrews had just thumped them a good one. Mm-hmm. And so they were not only left with a wrecked country, but they didn't have a belief system. They were, they were, their belief system was bankrupt. Uh-huh. And it was a reason why after that, that they just, you know, wavered and lost their way in terms of their own particular, right. uh, their own faith. So okay. uh, there's an awful lot of history that goes on to it. What we're seeing in general indicates more to me that this is going to be an event somewhere between Noah's flood and uh, the ten plagues of Exodus. We do, I do see a very high likelihood of a pole shift event happening, much like what Edgar Casey said it would be. Okay. All right. And by the way, uh, a uh, watcher wrote in this comment that uh, this two sons, um, of course, it's two two different movies, 2010, The Odyssey Continues, there were two sons, and then in um, uh, Luke Skywalker was looking out at two sons in the New Hope movie. But but uh, let me ask you, does uh, NASA know that there's a Planet X heading our way? Well, that's what we're saying. We're saying that uh, in the surviving 2012 video that you guys are going to be playing, is that they spotted this in 1983 with the IRAS uh, teles- space telescope. And that's when this first came up. And there's a whole story on that telescope, but it would have been the one that would have spotted this initially. And then we've had, uh, you know, by government informants that have come and, you know, they've said, hey, you know, they spotted it. Uh, the whole cover story of the IRAS being that the cooling system failed was just simply a smoke screen because what they did was once they found this object, they weren't specifically looking for it. They just found it in a sky survey. Really? And uh, after that, then the intelligence agency stepped in, and uh, what happened was that the spacecraft was, uh, the maneuvering jets were used extensively to keep that spacecraft pointed towards this object for as long as possible because... See, the thing is that you have to keep observing an object over time so that you can determine its trajectory. Right. Uh, astronomers call it an ephemeris. All right? Think of it like a train schedule or a bus schedule. You know at a certain time it's going to be at a certain place. Mm-hmm. And so you know where to find it. You know, you know where it's going to be. Well, that's what an ephemeris does for astronomers. And in order to build an ephemeris, you have to observe these objects over time. You just can't go oh, we saw it once, now we know exactly what it's doing, where it's going. All right? No, it doesn't happen that way. That's the reason why, for example, when you see on the news an asteroid could hit the Earth, Mm -hmm. all right? Initially, 99% of the time, what they find is with further study that the probability of an impact event becomes less and less and less. Mm -hmm. All right? which really goes to the point of the more you observe it, the more you understand the true behavior of it. Also to keep in mind, this is a long period object. People get fixated on this 3,600 year time frame. Yeah. That's not how long, long period objects, they varied as they're coming in, mm-hmm. especially uh, from the south and a highly inclined orbit, they speed up, uh, they can vary. So there's actually no way for Given the nature of this object and its approach, there's very, very little time for us to actually estimate in advance where it will be at any one point okay. in time. It, I believe it has a very unstable orbit. All right. Uh, Paul writes in our uh, live chat, he says that in the book of Revelation, it says that the stars will fall from the sky. Uh, of course, he goes on to suggest perhaps maybe that's alien, but perhaps that's a world. Somebody wrote in there. Uh, and another on the on the fast blast, they want to know: uh, Are there people on this planet X? Well, you know that was interesting. We <clears throat> we've got a big series. There was a a, a fellow by the name of Nibiru Shock 2012 on YouTube did a disclosure video. He had imagery taken from the South Pole Telescope of this object. And one of the questions we asked him was: On one of these satellites, is there 